William Washington Bodine was an American film actor and director. He was one of Hollywood's most prolific directors, turning out films in remarkable numbers and in a wide variety of genres. Life and career born in New York City, Bodine began his career as an actor in 1909 with American Mutoscope and Biograph Company. He married Marguerite Fleischer in 1914 and they stayed married until his death. Her sister was the mother of actor Bobby Anderson. Bodine's brother Harold Bodine was a director of short action filled comedy films. In 1915, he was hired as an actor and director by the Callum Company. He was an assistant to director D. W. Griffith on The Birth of a Nation and Intolerance. By the time he was 23, Bodine had directed his first picture, a short called Almost a King. He would continue to direct shorts exclusively until 1922, when he shifted his efforts into making feature length films. Bodine directed silent films for Goldwyn Pictures, Metro Pictures, First National Pictures, Principal and Warner Brothers. In 1926 he made Sparrows, the story of orphans imprisoned in a swamp farm starring Mary Pickford, and The Canadian, based upon a W. Somerset mom play and shot on location in Alberta with Thomas Maghan as the lead. Bodine had at least 30 pictures to his credit before the sound era began. Among his first sound films were short Max Senate comedies. He made at least one film for Senate while contractually bound elsewhere, resulting in his adopting the pseudonym, William Crowley. He would occasionally use the pseudonym in later years, usually as William X. Crowley. He ground out several movies annually for Fox Films, Warner Brothers, Paramount, and Universal Pictures. His most famous credits of the early 1930s are The Mad Parade, starring Evelyn Brent in the only World War I battlefield drama with an all female cast, Three Wise Girls, Jean Harlow's first starring film, and The Old Fashioned Way, a comedy about old time show folks starring W. C. Fields. Bodine was one of a number of experienced directors who were brought to England from Hollywood in the 1930s to work on what were in all other respects very British productions. Bodine directed four films there starring Will Hay, including Boys Will Be Boys and Where There's a Will, and the George Formby comedy Feather Your Nest. Bodine returned to America in 1937 and had trouble re-establishing himself at the major studios. Once widely known as an A-list director of important productions, Bodine had commanded a premium salary in the late 1920s that Hollywood producers of the late 1930s didn't want to match. He worked briefly at Warner Brothers, with whom he had been associated in Britain, and then waited for offers on his terms. They never came. Bodine had lost much of his personal fortune through no fault of his own. In 1940 publicist-turned-producer Jed Buell approached Bodine to direct an all-black cast feature for Buell's Dixie National Pictures. The salary was a flat $500 for one week's work. Bodine knew that if he accepted this job, he would henceforth be associated with low-budget films and would never command his old salary again, but with his finances at a low ebb Bodine accepted the assignment. Buell was pleased with Bodine's professionalism and inventive ways to maximize a shoestring budget. He hired Bodine to direct Misbehaving Husbands, noteworthy at the time as the comeback feature of silent screen clown Harry Langdon. It was a humble comeback for both Langdon and Bodine, since it was released by the Tiny Producers Releasing Corporation whose budget seldom ventured beyond five figures, but it was successful and re-established both Langdon and Bodine, albeit in B-pictures. William Bodine became a low-budget specialist, forsaking his artistic ambitions in favor of strictly commercial film fare, and recouping his financial losses through sheer volume of work. He made dozens of comedies, thrillers and melodramas with such popular personalities as Bella Lugosi, Ralph Byrd, Edmund Lowe, Gene Parker, and the East Side Kids. He became a fixture at the ambitious Monogram Pictures, and directed fully half of the 48 comedy features starring the Bowery Boys. By this time Bodine had a reputation for being a resourceful, no-nonsense director who could make feature films in a matter of days, sometimes as few as five. He occasionally directed special interest productions, like the 1945 Crusade for Sex Education feature Mom and Dad, produced by Kroger Babb and the 1950 religious drama Again Pioneers, produced by the Protestant Film Commission. In their book The Golden Turkey Awards, Michael and Harry Medved put William Bodine on their list of worst directors of all time. They gave him the unflattering nickname, One Shot, because he always seemed to shoot just one take, regardless of actors flubbing their lines or special effects malfunctioning. 
It is true that Bodine shot economically. He usually had no choice, but he was always professional, and actually did shoot multiple takes of movie scenes. The 1959 book Classics of the Silent Screen. A pictorial treasury remarks on, what a really fine director William Bodine was in the silent era. Long before he became the principal director of the Bowery Boys, B. Comedies. Bodine was often entrusted with series films, including The Torchy Blaine, The East Side Kids, Jigs and Maggie, The Shadow, Charlie Chan and the Bowery Boys series. His efficiency was so well known that Walt Disney hired him to direct some of his television projects of the 1950s and had him direct a feature western, Ten Who Dared. Bodine became even busier in TV, directing Naked City, The Green Hornet, and dozens of Lassie episodes. His last two feature films, both released in 1966, were the horror westerns Billy the Kid vs. Dracula and Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter. By the end of the decade he was the industry's oldest working professional, having started in 1909. The Academy Film Archive has preserved three films directed by William Bodine, Little Annie Rooney, Mom and Dad, and A Husband in Haste. Death Bodine died of uremic poisoning in 1970 in California and was interred in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood.